All right, everyone. Welcome to my first official stream on Twitch. This has been a long time in the making. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dre Sanchez. This is uh, also goes to my YouTube channel. Uh, I am, or I consider myself, the Motivated Sim Pilot. So uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, thanks for watching the stream. And today we are going to be flying this Pilatus PC-12 from Grand Junction, Colorado, all the way over to Colorado Springs. Flying time today is about an hour and 10 minutes or so. We are flying on the VATSIM network. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our aircraft here. All right, so I do have track IR here, so uh, hopefully it's not too shifty here. So what we can do now is just go up here and get the uh, aircraft at least turned on. So let's go ahead and turn on our battery. Let me turn my volume up here slightly. All right, so we've got the battery coming up. Of course, we want some external power. As you see, our amps are catching up to where they need to be. All right, let's go ahead and jump on these avionics here. And of course, we're going to turn on the nav lights. And it's a little dark in the cockpit, so we will also turn on some lighting once we get down low. Go ahead and turn our no smoking and seatbelt signs on for those who are on board this very small aircraft. And now we can go ahead and uh, jump back into the cockpit area here. We were just literally up top there. So those are my quick menus, though, for those on know how I'm dancing around the cockpit. Okay, so even though we're on the VATSIM network, there is no air traffic control. So let's go ahead and get our uh, lights on as promised here. So let's turn on, uh, let's see, let's get that maybe to 50% and we'll turn the flood on. And uh, let's see if that makes a difference. There we go, I think we can all see better there. And let's go ahead and uh, initialize our GPS here. It's been about a month since I've flown, so this ought to be an interesting, interesting time. Uh, my wife and I were business owners, so uh, that's kind of been keeping us really busy right now. But we're going to have some fun here. So here in a second, I'll pull in some other graphics here so that we can see exactly where we're going. We are here at Grand Junction. This is X-Plane, and uh, this is some updated... Uh, uh, scenery here for this location. I cannot recall to give the credit to who did this, but uh, they did a fantastic job. Uh, maybe afterward I'll find out who did it and share that just to give them credit so everything looks good. So now let's go ahead and pause the track IR there for a second. And hi, uh, GG Cat. Thanks for watching the stream and uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, okay, so. Now we want to go ahead and pull in uh, some graphics here. So let's go ahead and let me just pull in the flight plan here quickly. Okay, this is our flight plan here by SimBrief, of course. And as you can see here, our flying time today here, if you see this, is an hour and 10 minutes. This is the amount of fuel that I need minimum for takeoff, which we have more than enough. We'll check our fuel stores, which I believe is at uh, 1,300 and something pounds. And of course, these are other calculations uh, for reserve fuel. So altogether on the aircraft, we should have about two hours and 42 minutes plus 20 minutes of taxi. So it'll be up three hours of fuel. That's more than enough. And if we scroll down a little bit here, we can see our route. This is a VOR to which is a Grand Junction VOR. Then I believe this is Blue Mesa and this is DeBerry 3 arrival into Colorado Springs. Um, since we are, let's take a look at VATSIM or VATTASTIC right now to see. So as you can see here, um, we are m potentially going past some weather. Here's Grand Junction here, Walker Field. I'm the only departure here and we'll be flying right over here to Colorado Springs. So not a whole lot of weather as of yet, uh, but we'll see what's going on. And as you can also observe, there is no uh, air traffic control at this point. So um, this ought to be an interesting one. All right, so we've got that taken care of. What we should do now is, uh, let's go to FlightAware. 
um, so that we can uh, check some weather out here. Let's maximize the screen here for a second. And we'll just go here to the airport and we're going to go ahead and type in, uh, there it is there. Let's get this airport information. And now we will go check on the weather and also get our altimeter setting. So right now the winds are out of the north here and the temperature is 95 degrees and the altimeter is 3006. So let's pull that out of there let me minimize that bad boy and let's at least at the minimum go ahead and put our altimeter in here which was three zero zero six there we go we got the altimeter in there we know it's 95 degrees fahrenheit and the winds are out of the north now why is that important you might be asking yourself well we need to know since there's no air traffic control what the best runway is to take off so now we're going to come right on over here just as soon as I quit chasing my mouse and we have the Grand Junction uh, regional or Grand Junction regional here pulled up. So let's go to our airport information and look at the runways here. All right. So what we can ascertain here that we would agree that this stretch of pavement is the primary runway with 10,501 feet of uh, landing and takeoff space which is more than adequate then now we have to make a decision is it runway 11 which is south or is it more of a wet northwestern departure so in this case our best bet is to most certainly depart from runway 29er okay now once we're departing from runway 29er we're not leaving on any particular departure we're just going to be taking off and flying direct to um, Grand Junction VOR, but we need to also double check our uh, airport info. Well, actually, let's go back to this chart here and see if there's any. Okay, so this is something here. Runway incursion hotspot departure on runway 29 requires taxi via runway 22. So what they're basically saying is in order to get to um, runway 29er, we're going to have to taxi via Alpha and then uh, let any surrounding aircraft know that we will be taxiing on runway 22 to get to the threshold of 29 right here, if that makes sense. So it's very important that we read these notes. Pilots must hold short of both runways unless cleared for taxi on runway 22. Verify heading to prevent possible wrong runway departure. So that's very important. We want to make sure, as you see here, that we are at least lined up flying ahead of 29 or 2 versus 221, which that could be a grave mistake. It's, been, it's happened before in real life, so uh, there's no question if I'll be able to make that happen because I will. I'll make plenty of mistakes probably today, folks. So let's laugh together. So what this means for us, this is Grand Junction right here. So essentially... When we depart the runway, we'll just say, you know, this this is 270 due west. Then we're going to go ahead and depart. And this is 283. So we'll just say well, the runway is this way. We need to make a nice right turn so that we can intercept this uh, radial 60 from uh, Grand Junction. So we could do it a few different ways. I'm going to do it the easy way today. Another good way we could do it, we could actually program uh, this uh, Grand Junction frequency into our uh, nav radio make our right turn so it'll give us a nice little line to intercept I could put the aircraft on nav and it would follow the line or I can simply manually do it use my GPS in the aircraft to look at the reference and then go direct um, uh, to Grand Junction uh, if I would like to do so uh, and actually as I stand corrected here uh, I had the reference points messed up. This is actually the VUR. This is actually the airport. So scratch all that. We're actually going to be doing a left turn. We could do the same thing, though. We could do the inbound radial 60 here. Uh, if we were to, you know, uh, do that, we could use the same reference waypoint. If I wanted to cheat because we're not using any air, well, we're on the VATSUM network, but there's no air traffic control observed right now. We could literally just probably go direct uh, to... Blue Mesa, I believe it's Blue Mesa. Yeah, see here, Blue Mesa. We could go direct here too if we wanted to just to intercept that line. So we'll see how we feel when we get in the air, but I'm pretty sure we can make Grand Junction. Again, we'll be taking off this direction. We'll bust a nice little left turn, uh, go direct to Grand Junction and get out of there. So that's our route here. Um, and we already have everything figured out in terms of our route. If anybody has anything to say about that, then just let me know 
and we will most certainly uh, revisit that. So now with no further ado, uh, let's go on over. Unable to find view ID 11. To our GPS. Let me see if I've, at one point, uh, I may have to bind something here quick. Unable to find, find UID okay. 11. So, what we can do here is we are also using um, X camera. So, let's toggle the control panel quick. And we need to cycle through these views here. We got the front dash, the overhead. Let's just clean this up really quick. Okay, this is the problem here. We'll get rid of this three. We're gonna hit 11 and we're gonna go save all and uh, let's test this out. Again, I haven't flown for a month. There we go. So now we're in front of our GPS here. <clears throat> um, this is actually a third party uh, GPS from Reality GTN. This is the Reality GTN 750. But while we're here, while we're thinking about it, we are not gonna be flying VFR. So we're gonna put in a just a general squat code of 2200 so that they know on the VATSIM network that we are flying uh, IFR. And of course here, what we wanna do is uh, type in our Unicom frequency on the VATSIM network, which is 122.8, enter, booyah, switch it over so that way we can make any call outs for any pilots coming. More importantly at this point, wipe my nose here, more importantly at this point, we're gonna to get to the flight plan here. And as you see in the flight plan, um, we most certainly already have our first waypoint of interest, which is Grand Junction Regional, which is where we're at. Let's go ahead and add uh, the next thing, which is our Grand Junction VOR, which we already talked about. Then we already know we're going to Blue Mesa. There's Blue Mesa there. And then, of course, we need to go ahead and add in our final destination, which will be Colorado Springs. And then from this we can go ahead and load a procedure, which will be an arrival, and it's the DeBerry 3, and it'll be from Blue Mesa that we're making the transition, and then we most certainly can load the arrival. Uh, once we get up in the air, we'll figure out exactly uh, what we are doing in terms of runways. So there you go, there is the arrival. Let's make sure we don't have any redundancies, which we don't. Now we can come back over here, folks. We can go ahead, most certainly check out the map. It's also gonna show us our location. Uh, so as you see, it's gonna be an easy taxiway. We are already facing southeast. Uh, so we'll just uh, come over here, pick up Alpha, make our announcement in a runway 22, taxi to runway 29 and get out of here. And then we'll just indicate that we're going to do a pretty much we're going to be making a left turn. So that'll have us basically uh, south departure, south southeast departure. So <laughs> remind me to say that because I'm pretty sure I'll forget. And also remind me to get on to the chronometer. So uh, there you go. And uh, just looking at, up here at my second screen. Sorry, my face on this side is a little dark. I try to get some light there, but I didn't want to put too much light there because uh, I, I actually need to see what I'm flying. Okay, so that's our route. Um, and you can also see here as we leave again, that's that turn that we're talking about, even though we'll be well, you know, uh, northwest of the runway threshold, but we'll make our left turn to intercept. This is direct right now from the airport to Grand Junction, but we most certainly um, don't need to do that. So uh, we'll just come back here and know that that is all good. So at this point, we can go ahead and leave our situation uh, as far as this screen is concerned, where it is at, let's go ahead and jump up top now. Uh, first of all, let's get outside the aircraft and uh, let's just take a look here. We most certainly need to button up some doors here. So let's go ahead and do that at this point. Scroll on a little bit. You can see we've got our nav light, little shadow casting right now, of course, because of the time of the day and where the sun is at. So we'll come to this feature, which doesn't seem to be working and hopefully we don't have a freeze going on here which it looks like all right we're back in so all this is working here good for some reason oh there we go there we go so we'll go ahead and i got scared there i thought i was gonna have to end the stream and start all over again but it is most certainly working so there you go now the 
passenger door and baggage door and the static elements are removed. Let's go out one more time and just re-verify that. As you can see now, the bird is all buttoned up. Uh, we're good to go. Um, and there's no other aircraft around us. So as you can see, we should just basically taxi out uh, here to the left. That'll be Alpha and we'll take it on down there. So um, I believe we are set up for success at this point. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and already bring this mixture up to where it says ground idle. So we are at the top down looking at the lower pedestal. Um, I'd like to do that on here. Also, I'm checking our uh, trims and elevators and uh, our yaw, all that good stuff. So it looks good there. So now with no further ado, the last thing we're doing today, we are flying at uh, 19 thousand feet or in aviation correct politically correct terms that would be flight level uh, one nine or zero so let's just assume which we'll double check again that we don't have any air traffic control but we're gonna make the assumption that we're gonna go direct up to uh, flight level one nine or zero and uh, maybe we'll do an IAS climb uh, again I'm rusty with this so you guys just have to bear with me and uh, pray for me basically all right so now that that is complete, I'm going to most certainly come up top. Let's put our beacon on to let other aircraft and people know that we are going to be starting our aircraft. Every, nothing else needs to be on at this point because we need to, first of all, get the engine started so that we can turn our generators and inverters on and all that happy stuff. So now we'll go ahead and hold the starter. Uh, and as I hold the starter, I'll continue holding. I'll let you know when I let it go for engine start. All right, I'm releasing the starter. We've got rotation. Let's take a look there for a second. Back this out as well. All right, looks like we don't have any hot start. RPMs are coming up. Here's our fuel quantity here, folks. So fuel quantity is looking really good. All right, now we need to come up and get our generators on. Left generator, right generator, and of course our inverter. We can extinguish the ground power. Now we can turn all of our uh, pedo uh, heat, open the inertia, inertia separator, uh, to let more extra air into the manifold or the intake um, to control that. And of course the probes, this is our pedo. And uh, no de-icing conditions right now, so we're good there, but we can most certainly uh, turn the cooling on. And I don't think we need any cabin heating, but we'll put it on just in case the temperature decides to drop once we get up top, which it will because of our elevation and start heating those passengers up. So that's probably a good thing. And of course, we are gonna go ahead and turn our taxi light on. Now, without further ado, as you notice here, our flaps are only set to zero. So let's go ahead and drop the flaps. 15 degrees altimeter is set so we are good to go now the last thing I'm gonna do I'm looking at my other computer screen and uh, I'm gonna check the plug-in we the only people we have close to us is Salt Lake City Center which we're not we're in the Denver uh, Center airspace all right so no worries there Okay, without further ado, it is time to rock and roll. So now let's go ahead and uh, make our announcements. Grand Junction Regional, uh, Silver 318 is here on the General Aviation parking ramp. We'll be taxiing to runway 29er via Alpha and runway 22 for a southeast departure direct Grand Junction for uh, Grand Junction Regional. All right, so we're looking left, it looks clear. We are gonna look right, it looks clear. We're gonna go down here and make sure that the parking brake is extinguished, which it is. Now we have some rotation. Uh, I am sweating in my boots a little bit just simply because I'm doing a first live stream and uh, I have not flown in quite some time. So this ought to be truly interesting. 
uh, to see. All right. Once we get to the uh, threshold of the runway, we will most certainly uh, increase our mixture down there, our prop RPM and all that stuff. Right now, I just have it set pretty low for because I find it easier with this. Uh, so this aircraft is, uh, I bought this from Carnado some time ago, and this aircraft uh, tends to taxi pretty squirrely, and the braking is really squirrely. So obviously in the real world, you'd be using the tow brakes or whatever brakes that they have established for this aircraft, and it wouldn't be as jerky, but this is a simulation world, so sometimes stuff happens. Hope everybody out there is doing well, keeping a positive mental mindset, during these uncertain times and if you can find a hobby or something to take the stress away for even just a little bit then uh, do it that's why I'm sitting here flying today I told my wife that I was gonna fly I've been working uh, a lot lately obviously work never ends and uh, I just haven't flown in about a month so Alright, let's make our nice little turn here. Alright, so now we are on Alpha. Excuse me. For shaking my head like that. Guess the next time I could actually uh, pause track IR. There we go. It gets a little warm under these lights in here so that I can uh, broadcast myself on the screen. Alright, so we're cruising right along. Probably have to tap the brake here in a second. And then we're going to just basically come to a stop here to announce that we're entering the runway. Because once we enter this runway, we all have all our lights on and everything set to go. Alright. Double check, parking brake is set for the moment. Grand Junction Regional. Silver 318 holding short of runway 22 will be entering runway 22 for back taxi to runway 29 for southeast departure direct Grand Junction for Grand Junction Regional. Okay, that is most certainly a mouthful, but you know, what are you going to do? All right, let's switch over to the uh, first officer side in order to better see this lever. Even though I don't have a first officer, I am the first officer, go figure. All right, we're set to go. Let's do our final checks, folks. Okay, flaps set to 15. Let's make sure our GPS, it is set to GPS. We have our altimeter set. We have our props all the way up. Uh, let's go up top, double check something. Uh, taxi light is on. Now we're gonna enter our landing light and we're also going to turn our strobe light on since we're entering the runway. And uh, we are good to go, folks. Let's look left, look right. Overhead panel looks good. That's where I was at up top. No worries. All right. Without further ado, let's make this thing happen here. It's double checking. Okay. Once we get in the air, we'll do a little bit more uh, planning for our arrival. want to just do a quick check before you fully enter another runway All right all right we'll line ourselves up plenty of runway. She's pulling. Airspeed is alive. Coming up on 90 knots, we can go ahead and rotate. Alright, 
Here it is coming up. We'll keep the flaps down for a second. We just want to follow the runway threshold here. aircraft down here a little bit all right here in a second we will most certainly start making our turn all right let's go ahead and get our autopilot on with our yaw damper we'll go heading for now and we'll do an ISA climb there we go now the autopilot has it we're going to go flaps up, and of course we're going to start a turn. Let's see here. Let me pause my track IR for a second and start our southeast turn. Alright, so we're starting our turn as we climb, and we definitely still need to do a call out. So now we're going to go direct to Grand Junction. We're going to activate that. As you can see, we're pretty much direct here if you take a look. So we're doing all right. And then now we're just going to hit the nav mode. And now we can uh, increase the throttle here a little bit. I'm going to bring the power back slightly. I'll go to the first officer side to do that here in a second. But now you can see we are actually direct Grand Junction. Grand Junction Regional, Silver 318 is airborne, 8000, climbing flight level 190, uh, direct Grand Junction for Grand Junction Regional. All right, so there you go, folks. We are up and at them. We're monitoring our climb. We're climbing a little slower, but that's okay. Climbing a little slower, but it definitely gives this aircraft uh, a better rate of climb, especially because this aircraft is so light. Now let's come right over here. You see we're redlining it, so we need to bring our power back pretty quick here. Let's go to the first officer side and put this more into a climb situation. Now you can see it's not redlining on the torque. We were redlining, uh, actually it was on the NG over here. Now you can see, since I brought that back, everything is in the pretty much the green or the yellow, which is okay. So that's what we want. Again, we are flying pretty slow right now. If you can see, the speed is nothing to call and brag about, but it's a nice little climb, and uh, we'll pick up speed uh, once we get a little higher and we'll pitch down a little bit so now it's telling me that we are most certainly where we can turn our taxi and our landing lights off so that's done we'll keep the initial separate the initial separator open inertia separator open there you go we're above 10,000 so that's good means we can turn our lights off and all that jazz. So, everything is looking good here. Nice little climb. We'll go and check our route here really quick. And uh, in the meantime, let's uh, jump in the back see what's going on. I don't recommend you guys do this, by the way. Let's go to the other side here and just look out the window. You can see the wing is strobing there. You can also take a look into the cabin and see that Cardinal did a fantastic job of the modeling of this aircraft. And of course, just imagining passengers are definitely invisible at this point. All right, let me grab my control here. Come back up into the cabin where we should be. So right now, we're not crazy cl too climbing too crazy, about 1,700 feet per minute, 
which I like. That'll get us up to altitude fairly quick. And then uh, the IAS, which is the indicated airspeed climb, will extinguish itself and we'll be at our cruising altitude of flight level 190, and then we can mess with uh, the engine and the propellers and all the props uh, just to see where we're at for speed. As you can see, we're making our nice uh, autopilot control turn here. So we're making a left turn, and now we are direct Blue Mesa. Not a bad departure, though, simply because uh, I haven't flown in so such a long time, and you can definitely see the elevation that we were able to pick up safely uh, and stay terrain free because we departed the airport pretty much how we planned. We should be getting the airport here back in the view here in a second after this left turn is complete. Here it is off in the distance. We're redlining again, so we need to come back over here to the first officer side. Bring this down slightly. All right, we're not redlining anymore. Sorry, I got to reach uh, in order to perhaps I should just pull this back to reach my control. Let me pause this here quick. There we go again, redlining, so we're going to most certainly have to get that figured out. I dropped a pin here. Alright, so back over to the first officer's side we go. And back down, and we're not redlining anymore. So you got to really watch these engines. That's why I didn't mind keeping the slower speed. And there you get a good view of the field. This is runway, uh, hold on, let me pause this. Track IR. Okay, so this is runway uh, 22. This is where we were parked. We essentially taxied here to runway 22, and that's runway 29. And that's, that's where we left. So that's pretty cool. Let's check our location on the GPS. Oops. Wrong one. And as you can see, we are still direct to Blue Mesa. And we've got about uh, 83 nautical miles until we get to Blue Mesa. Then from Blue Mesa, we go right into our arrival, which we'll be talking about here shortly. All right. The higher we get, the more I have to pay attention to the fuel mixture here. And again, it also has to do with elevation. Now that we are past flight level 180, we're going to put this into the standard barometric pressure in the United States, which is 299 or 2. We should be reporting the correct uh, altitude there. All right, in about 230 feet, we'll be pitching down. As you can see, the alarm just sounded that we are at altitude. All right, everything here looks good in the green. Now we can go up top as we, what I'm noticing here, we'll see as we're picking up speed now. But now we're done with our climb, we need to close the inertia separator. So we're going to come up here, and we are going to close the inertia separator. And we can also put some the icing on, light the icing, just to be on the safe side. Nav, beacon, and strobe stay on. Everything else up top looks g -O -O -D. All right. So this is the indicated airspeed, and we're almost at 150 knots indicated. What does that mean for us moving over the ground? Well, you can come here now and see that our ground speed is 227 knots and increasing over the ground. And then our true airspeed would be something else different. Um, 
So that's kind of the differentiation between three different air speeds. So we're still continuing to pick up some airspeed as I had foreseen. All right, flaps up, gear up, a late after takeoff checklist, but nonetheless we're doing it. Pedal still looks good. You can hear that clicking, that's just, uh, for whatever reason, Coronado has tied a clicking noise to any time the GPS makes any adjustment, whether it's us or them, or itself. All right, we are looking good. Cruising right along. We're just gonna stay here and monitor this. And then we'll get ready for our arrival and we need to look at some weather. I'm on my second screen up top now. I need to look at the weather for Colorado Springs so we can start ascertaining which runway that we wanna land on. All right, so the weather in Colorado Springs is, uh, wow, pretty, okay, 87 degrees. I was looking at the wrong number. Dew point is three, visibility is 10 miles, it's VFR conditions, and uh, the wind direction is basically uh, 40 degrees, which is out of the north, basically, northeast. Uh, it's a pretty view there. Looks like we're capping out at a certain speed, and the altimeter, I'm going to write this down on my trusty notepad, the altimeter now is 3014, and right now the winds are at 40 degrees at 5 knots. Alright, all that's very important information to know for our arrival. So, now that we have that, let me also check, uh, still have no air traffic control, so that's good too. Just looking over the flight plan. I'll give you guys a quick snapshot of what we look like on VATSIM. So here we are, Servo 318 cruising right along, and our destination is right here. So on the arrival, we'll eventually come in this way here. Now we're going to start our selection. I wonder if you guys also want to see the weather that I was looking at. It's right here as well. Let's expand this window, and as you can see, here's the weather. Five knots out of the uh, northwest. Visibility is 10 miles. It's 87 degrees Fahrenheit or 31 degrees Celsius. Altimeter is 3014. Density altitude 9,313 feet. There we go. Now, let's check our speed. Let's check our GPS here quick. Still on course. Still cruising right along. Okay, so now. What we need to do is start our pre-planning since this is a somewhat of a short flight for our arrival. Now I use Navigraph charts. I've been a subscriber of theirs for some time. Uh, here, let's kind of put it over here so you can at least see something. All right. So at this point, we are direct Blue Mesa, and then the green right here it'll start our arrival. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pull up the charts list for Colorado Springs. And let's take a look at our available runways. Okay, so the winds are out of the northwest, basically. So we're going to be probably landing on uh, runway 35. And we'll see what the best approach for it is for us. So we'll do a northern landing. And we are going to pick... Runway 35 left, and here's the reason why. If I'm trying to save gas and minimize my taxi, well, we're flying a general aviation style aircraft, so 
we want to minimize our travel time across the field. So we'll land on uh, runway 35 left and head right into general aviation parking. So hopefully we land quick enough and to save all the gas in the world, we get off here at uh, Alpha 2 and then park anywhere in this area. Now let's go ahead and look at our standard terminal arrival, which is the Barry 3. So as you can see here, we're gonna come Blue Mesa. We'll maintain altitude. We can probably drop altitude at that point to 17,000 feet to stay above the uh, minimum altitude advisement. And of course, we're gonna be landing north so if we're landing north, let's take a look and see where the field is at. There should be some, okay, there's no text on here, so there's another thing that we're gonna use. But here is the runways here, three five left, three five right. So we'll take this flood, and then uh, we can get on course here to go direct Black Forest. Uh, or we'll use another tool to figure that out which I'll show you right now, actually. So what we can do, that's, what I, that's one thing I love about uh, using this Navigraph, is you can simply ask to see, let me see if I'm maximizing so you guys can see what's going on. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, let's see, we don't wanna open the charts list. Here's the runways. Now, if you click on this DeBerry here, it'll also show an overlay. Now, here's the different arrivals. Let me click this off here. Here's the different arrivals that we can take. So that's what we want to do. So we're going to first click. There's the DeBerry. So that's already shown. Now we want to click on approaches. Now, we said we wanted runway 35 left. And this is via an NDB. But let's see what our other options are here. So... There's plenty that we can do. We can even take the ILS 35 left. So we'll choose that. And let's just make it show from final. So now what this does, it gives me a visual uh, representation of the final to the runway. So essentially this is still part of our arrival and then once we get to this point here we can uh, or at this point here I should say we can make a left turn and go direct now it did ask me if I wanted to choose a different arrival which is Pueblo so if I decided to do that all you need to do is come back in here and go to approach we're gonna go back to ILS 35 left Let's see, I don't know where Drake is at. Okay, so we definitely wouldn't do Drake. So basically, it would be a waste of our time to come all the way over to this VOR just to get that. So in my opinion, we can also look at doing an RNAV Zulu arrival and see what waypoints, let's say we take it from Fisher that would be Fisher right here, and we'll take it in. So maybe we'll take it from Fisher and bring it in all, all the way in. As you can see here, we're still doing good. It looks like uh, we're now in a little bit of the weather, which I anticipated, skirting over the clouds. So the good thing is uh, we're flying IFR, and uh, so if we were flying VFR right now, we'd be in big trouble, because we for sure could not see where we needed to go. So now let's come over here and take a look at our GPS and just note that we still have not even made it even to get to turn on course to our arrival. We got about 32.6 nautical miles to get there. So now what we wanna do is start planning for our arrival. So here's Fisher, okay? So what we'll do is, since you noticed on our arrival, uh, and I'll go back and make sure it's Fisher. We're actually going to do an RNAV. And we'll take an RNAV from Fisher uh, once we get there. So we could even now 
come in here to this waypoint and just load it since we have no air traffic control and now we can select an approach here's the ILS 35 left that we could do um, but we actually want to do the RNAV 35 left Zulu so this this GPS doesn't give us the option to do an RNAV 35 left Zulu but we can do the Yankee so if we pick RNAV 35 left Yankee let's select that and let's see what other transition it would give us Drake, Vectors, Pub so here's what we're going to do we are going to kind of cancel that out and go back to the drawing board since we don't actually have that uh, in there so let me just take one more look here and see what, what it gave us for our options of waypoints so 3-5 left Yankee is our choice we don't want vectors so it's giving us Pueblo Drake I'm interested in Ash double L so we'll leave that there right now let me give you guys something to look at and I'm going back up top to find out where the Ash double L is at It's a fix. And I think I like it. We'll take it. It's not exactly directly on way, but we'll take it and it'll still get us to where we need to be for the field. So, having said that, we can come on all over back to our trusty GPS and most certainly select Ash and we're just going to load we don't want to activate so we are just going to load as you see we'll come this way we'll pick up ash so we're out almost gonna overshoot it so what I may do is when we get here I may even just go direct to midday and bring it straight in that way so we'll load the approach and now let's observe the approach so flood Fisher black forest So basically, once we get to Fisher, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to remove this waypoint because we don't need to go to Black Forest now. Now we can go Fisher, and then we can go direct Ash, or then I can go direct there. What I love about it too, it's telling me my initial approach fix, how high I have to be. So I have to be at least above 8,100 feet at this point. Okay. Alright, let's go back to the map. Actually, there's one more thing that I want to do. Let's go to flight plan. And we can come here to menu. And we can preview our flight plan. So here's the flight plan. So this is where I was saying, here's Flood and here's Fisher. I could almost delete. Actually, when we get to Flood, I'll just go direct to Ashel. So we'll cut out some of the middleman and we'll still make sure we do a nice descent to 8,100 feet. As you can see, coming here out of these mountains is very precarious, so we don't want to be lower than we're allowed to be. Because that would have certainly spell doom for us in this situation. Alright, so let's go back and we're in a cloud. No worries there. All right, now let me go ahead and check the VATSIM network via VATTASTIC just to see where we are at. All right, so we're still rolling good, still no ATC. So I suppose at this point we can just cruise along. All right, and I may step away for a second uh, just simply because we're going to be cruising. Alright. Anyway, again, 
if you are watching, thanks for watching the stream. Hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, again, my first stream. I'm not expecting a whole lot from this. This is more just a chance also for me to um, basically practice my flying skills again. Which I haven't flown for quite some time. So, we can probably throw some music on. Let's get some of that going. new scene here. There we are. I'm going to add a new scene so it'll be quiet here in just one second. Give me a second here. guys will have a little bit of music and uh, hopefully enjoy the route until we get to where we need to be let me go over here and just uh, double check where exactly we are in terms of distance so we have 88 nautical miles to flood that's really when the action is truly going to start get ready to anticipate our descent uh, and go from there. Again, before we... Uh, and actually, one thing that I can do is uh, we can come over here and let's use our charts. Alright, so... Which, which one are we on? Approach. We want arrivals, actually. And this is what we want. So now, what we're going to do is... So once on our way to flood, so even right now, we could descend to 17,000 feet, but we'll do that before we get to flood. So this is our arrival. And then from flood, we are going to go direct to... Asho, which you don't see here, so we'll be uh, down to 17,000 feet here, and then after that we will start descending down even further, because one thing you want to do is make sure you're staying at the altitudes that they're telling you to, because there is a significant amount of terrain that will be beneath us, so about 82 miles, so maybe uh, 20 nautical miles out, we'll start our descent down, since it's only 2,000 feet meantime let's monitor that and enjoy some sounds
All right, enough of that music. It is time to descend down to where we need to be, pass it through some clouds, and then we're gonna go direct to Ashel. So let's go ahead and get uh, 17,000 here. We're gonna set that. We're gonna come over to our vertical speed indicator. And now we are going to start our descent. And then we'll pull back the power just a little bit. Let's come look over here at our trusty GPS. And then once we get to flood, as you see here, this is the same top of descent, but we're starting our descent now. Once we get past here, I'll even set in 8,100 feet. And uh, we're going to go direct to Ashel. And hopefully, since I'm taking a shortcut, we can... Uh, Gotta watch that speed there. We can most certainly uh, get to our 8,100 feet. I'm switching the altimeter to 3014. Let's watch that speed. Pulling back on the power. And we'll drop this just a little bit. And now that we're out of that little valley, we can go ahead and keep going on down. We got about 10 nautical miles until we get to the point where we're going to go direct Ashel. And we know at Ashel we need to be above 8,100 feet, which here is only about 2,000 feet above because remember that uh, Colorado Springs and Denver are mile high cities. They're above 5,000, I believe this airfield is 6,000 something feet. I'll double check it. I will double check it. All right, track IR jumping on. Let me recenter since I did walk away for a second. Got to keep a very close eye on that power as we get lower. We'll be able to bring the torque up or the props up here in a little bit. We'll see we're not at our point quite yet. But what we can do is we'll come over here, we got four miles, we're gonna hit the direct button, we're gonna hit flight plan, and then we're gonna hit Ash here, Ash will here in a second. We'll wait just until we get to where we need to be to do it. We'll just be waiting on until this says one nautical mile, then we'll go ahead and make our turn. Now what I'm going to do, since we are in the clear, I'm going to do a pretty much standard descent of 1,800 feet per minute and see where that gets us. All right, we got one nautical mile, so let's go direct Ashland now. And there's our turn, folks. And actually, we're going to go direct midday. which is a much better option. So now we're direct midday on into there. We need to be above 8,100 feet. And we've got about 21 nautical miles to get there and about 6,000 feet to drop. So let's increase our rate of descent here up to 2,200 feet and I'll pull back on the power. And uh, we will start getting ready for arrival. Colorado Springs traffic. This is Silver 318 at 13,600 feet. Departed Fisher Fix. We are direct Ashel for arrival on 35 left for Colorado Springs traffic. All right, so we did our call out. Uh, hopefully that... Uh, will be heard by any pilots in the direct vicinity, and which I'll go ahead and check right now to see if there is any pilots in the direct vicinity. And there is not, so there's no one by us. So let me show you guys that. Here we are, here's Colorado Springs. As you can see, there's no pilots on the network even close to us. These guys are quite a ways away. So we're safe, we're, there's no weather. It looks like we got a nice clean arrival into the Colorado Springs area. Now 
what I'm doing, you monitor the speed here. Now what I'm doing is pulling up the field information for Colorado Springs. And I'm looking at 3.5 left, the Yankee. I'm going to tell you guys right now what field elevation is on. Before I do that, we can't get complacent. We have to come up here and uh, turn our taxi light on and our landing light. Can't forget that. Got a multitask doing this, folks. We've got 11 nautical miles, so we're getting close. So field elevation is 6,075 feet. Once we get to Cusack, we will start our final approach into the runway. 35 left. All right, I think we can be safe enough to stop such a crazy rate of descent. We are definitely going to make it where we need to be. So let's orientate ourselves via the map. Once we get to midday, we'll take a nice left turn to Cusack, which we also need to be at 8,100 feet, and then we'll take it from there. Just keep our speed intentionally where we want it to bleed a little bit because we are going to have to now get that up to par so that's what we want we want to bleed speed We've got about six nautical miles for a left turn let's see if we can look this way and see the fill and there it is over there there's the runway and this is the uh, airport right there Here in a second, we'll deploy our flaps. Here's our flap speeds here. This is the point where you want to take it nice and easy. Once we make our left turn, I'll put the aircraft into approach mode. Got about two nautical miles before we make the turn. Let's double check our flight plan to make sure everything is activated, which it is. Looks good. Back over. Appreciate you guys flying on board today, this Silver 318. Generally, I don't give myself a any type of uh, airline identifier flying, you know, on uh, a general aviation aircraft. But VATSIM will not allow me to call, to use a tail number like November three five zero because I'll tell you or something like that. So you have to put something on there because it's more or less designed for those individuals who are doing the whole airline thing, which I've done before. All right, so we'll go ahead now and put this bad boy into the approach mode. We've got runway 35 left, right in our 12 o'clock position. Colorado Springs traffic, silver 318 turns final, passing midway for runway 35 left, going to Genoa Aviation for Colorado Springs traffic. All right, made the call out again, either way, Here in a second, we will take the autopilot off. All right, we're gonna drop the speed down now. And we're at 150. First stage of flaps, as you can see here, are coming out. All right. That's telling me to pick up the speed a little bit. All 
right here in a second we will be deploying our landing gear normally this aircraft will be touched down in 90 knots we'll plan for between 195 for the winds being at 5 knots all right gear is coming down let's observe that Gear is down, indicated. We're gonna freeze there, landing lights are on. Before landing checklist is complete. All right, and let's go ahead and take it full manual, folks. Turn the all damper off, autopilot is off, my aircraft. Let's go ahead and extinguish this, uh, there we go, it went off on its own. Alright, at this point we're going another stage of flaps, and I'm only going to land at flaps 30. Go ahead and trim the aircraft down a little bit. If you notice in my PFD, or my primary flight display, we don't have any visual uh, cues for our pitch, but we have lateral. Nice, slow, steady approach. Let's double check gear being down. Gear is down, three green. Everything's looking good. All right, as you can see, the fields on the light, we look like we have two red and two white, which is what we want. I simply need to follow the path and just manage my speed, trim the aircraft down slightly. All right, let's follow our lateral cues here. I used to live in Colorado Springs, so I deployed to Iraq from Colorado Springs, Fort Carson. All right, still pitching down a little bit. There we go. Back on the power slightly. Still okay. Oh, oh, we still okay. We're still okay uh, on our glide slope. All right. It's telling us we're a little high. But I'm all visual now, so I'm not even worried about the lights. We'll end up catching back up. So the lights will be in our favor. power back. If you notice our airspeed, we're right at 100 knots. Pitch the aircraft up slightly. All right, runway is clear. Folks, back on the power, and nice smooth touchdown. You didn't even hear it. And we'll just coast her in a little bit. We are bleeding speed, folks. And I'll get on the brakes and 
and see if we can make this first turn. made the first turn folks we are on Alpha 4 pretty much right where we need to be Colorado Springs traffic silver 318 clear of runway 35 left heading to generation parking for Colorado Springs traffic all right let's go ahead and ease up slightly here all right now we'll set the parking brake all right we're going flaps up as you can see, the flap is in transit. Now, of course, let's go ahead and jump up top. We're going to get our landing eye. We can turn our strobe off. And then, of course, we can go to the first officer side. And we can pull the RPMs back slightly to ground idle. There we go. Calm those bad boys down a little bit. And we made it in. Now, let's go take a peek, quick peek at our GPS. And as you can see here, Let's just scroll in. General Aviation is to the right, so we definitely made our first turn. So let's go right on Alpha. Then, uh, actually, we can go straight over and just pick up the General Aviation area. So let's do that. All right, let's look left. Let's look right. Let's notice what we are on there. We are on Alpha 4, okay? Colorado Springs traffic, Silver 318. On Alpha 4, holding short of Alpha, continuing taxi straight on Alpha 4 to General Aviation parking ramp for Colorado Springs traffic. All right, so let's look right, let's look left, and let's do our thing. I want to thank everybody for flying with us today. I enjoyed my first stream. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Nice scenic mountains there. Go ahead and make this nice little soft right turn. And we'll go find somewhere to park. Soft right turn. I don't know if I said soft left turn, but it was a right turn. I actually like that area over there. It looks secluded. It looks perfect for what we want to do. second we can come back and watch the replay of our nice smooth touchdown all right all right folks now we can go ahead and shut the aircraft down let's observe parking brake is set let's go up top and we are going to turn all our probes off systems off let the engine continue doing its thing Let's turn our inverter off, generator off, of course. We're going to turn our taxi light off and our beacon off. Actually, we should leave the beacon on until the rotor stop. Uh, all right. And then we can go here for a complete shutdown. All right. As you can see, the prop is uh, most certainly coming to a halt. Let's go back up top now turn our beacon off we'll leave our nav lights on let's actually get some external power on I am thinking about doing another flight passengers can get this cut off here of course 
And if we jump outside, we'll go ahead and see that we are parallel with the hanger and we can open up our doors and then oh, wrong one so let's open up the passenger obviously there you are and now we will go for the baggage door so you guys who were passengers on board can get your stuff off now without further ado let's do a replay but before i do a replay i have to disconnect from uh the vat sub network and one error that i did make during the whole flight two errors that i already am going to call myself out on one, I didn't put my transponder into the uh, transmoting frequency, but there was no air traffic control, so they would have checked me on that. And two, I forgot to start the chronometer, which I always forget to start the chronometer. Uh, so shame on me. Let's go ahead here and come over here and just take a look at the replay mode. And, oh, and I forgot to disconnect myself from the network, even though I told you guys, but it does it for you automatically. That's a feature when they updated it. All right, let's figure out and we'll do an outside view first. Maybe from right here. Let's do a good old rusty shift five. Let's find the aircraft in the air. There it is. This is the tower view. And uh, well, we don't even need to mess with this. We'll just leave that as is. And we will most certainly take a look at how we look take a look at how we look anyway I hope to be doing more of these I at least want to do once one per weekend I'll be working next weekend uh, big exciting stuff going up to the Bay Area for my company um, and my affiliate company who I work with and we're gonna be doing some awesome stuff and some podcasting and some training on the range uh, but this is what we look like folks coming in it seemed to be a pretty smooth touchdown you know, very nicely done for our uh, first flight after a month of not flying. Let's get a little. There we go. Much better view. And we can actually pause that. Let's go back in and see what it looked like. From the cabin all right we'll go uh perhaps we'll go left side here and let's replay this they did a good job with the texturing uh here little wing view landing Not bad at all. You can look around the cabin. So I hope you passengers enjoyed that nice, easy, easy, easy landing. I must say it was super easy on your guys' backs because I'm such a professional. <laughs> such a professional, yeah, right. Um, but. I enjoyed doing this first stream. Uh, perhaps I should turn track IR so I'm not looking around everywhere. I enjoyed this first stream. We're just kind of bringing in here. I hope you guys uh, join me for my next stream, and uh, hopefully it'll be a little bit more smoother and that I remember to do everything that I'm supposed to do in the stream. So uh, appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time here from uh, the Motivated Sim Pilot. Me, Dre Sanchez, and we'll see you next time on the channel. Look for me also on YouTube, Dre Sanchez, um, on YouTube, and um, you'll see uh, I have a plethora of recorded videos that I edited, but now I'm more getting into live streaming. I'm also going to plug the company in which I'm the CEO and founder of, Nexus Energy International. You can look up my website, www.neiagency.com. Uh, we do social media some veterans benefits seminars. Uh, we also have a keynote speakers bureau and yours truly is a motivational speaker. Um, 
And of course, we have our affiliate company, which I'm the number two for, which is 911 Academy. We teach all Americans uh, to be first responders, and that means we give you first responder training from the lowest level. So that's your whole family and everybody up. Of course, the other component we have, we have we are a defensive tactics and firearms company. We actually bring people out on the range and teach them how to protect themselves, not just with firearms, but also with combatives and awareness. We give pre and post trauma awareness as well. That website is www.911academy.com. Check us out. We'll see you next time on the stream. I'm out.